video here that's a basic form of stretching that could be great for anybody. Um, it's going to attack a lot of hip opening and uh, working on things that are going to be tight for the general population, which are people who work at desks here in America. So this is going to work on uh, the outer IT bands and hip mobility and working on the different muscles in the hip flexors. Um, this would be a complete corrective stretching routine that could be done daily, if not more than once a day. Um, it's going to have some static stretching, but mostly active stretching and a little bit of dynamic stretching. If I were to do this type of stretching, um, I would do it either after a workout or I would do it uh, if, if I were to do it before a workout, I would want to make sure that I do something to warm up before I go into lifting. I wouldn't want to go straight from this into lifting. So the first movement I'm going to do here, I want to open up my hips uh, as if I were trying to do the splits, uh, but from my knees here. So I'm going to get as wide apart from my knees as I can. I'm going to plant my hands here and they're not going to move through this movement. So from here, I have pressure downwards and now I'm just going to rock back and push my butt into my hips. Keeping pressure downwards, rocking back, and then I'm going to rock forward. And I'm going to do this repeatedly, forward and backward. But at all times, the pressure is downward. So as I go, my knees will start to get further apart. Now the goal here is not to push my knees forward like this, it's to keep them down and apart. Uh, this movement's going to start to open up that hip socket and it's going to provide um, some synovial fluid in that area and loosen up those, those hip joints. So we're going to do this just for a little bit. You could do it as long as you want, uh, but I generally would go one to two minutes here before I go to the next position. From here, I'm gonna go into a seated butterfly. Now, from this one, what I wanna do is I'm gonna grab my feet, pull up on my feet. At the same time, I'm gonna be putting active pressure down on my knees, and I'm gonna try and stand up or sit up real tall, keeping my back flat here. Now, you could definitely flap your butterfly wings or your knees here, uh, to promote more movement in that hip socket or keep it static. Now, if I were more flexible, I would be trying to get my knees all the way to the ground. In fact, I am trying, I just can't do it. So, pulling here, pushing down. Now, from this movement, what I want to do is I'm going to go into a V-sit stretch. Again, kind of like the splits here, except I'm not standing up. I want to get my legs as far apart as I can and what I want to make sure is that my knees are flat. A lot of times people will have such tight hamstrings that when they go to this position, their knees sit up like this. So if that's you, move your knees closer together, but keep them flat on the ground. That's what we're looking for, as wide as you can with the knees flat, okay? Uh, if you're bending your knees, you're actually shortening your hamstrings, so you're not stretching them if you're shortening them. We want to keep these knees straight. And here what we're going to do to make this an active stretch, we're just going to reach forward and touch the ground. However far you can reach, that's fine. But you'll notice if you're paying attention to where you're touching, each time you go forward, you should be able to touch just a little bit further. Pause and hold there. I'll take a breath in here. Exhale here. I'm going to keep doing that. Each time my hips are opening up just a little bit, my hamstrings are loosening up, my back's loosening up, and I'm getting a little deeper into that stretch. Now, after I've done that a few times, uh, my, uh, my muscles are gonna loosen up. What's going on is there's uh, a thing called the Golgi tendon in the muscle. And the Golgi tendon is there to prevent your muscle from stretching too fast and too far. And so as you put it into a stretching movement, uh, it starts to spasm and shake. You'll notice sometimes you get real shaky when you're trying to stretch, but that Golgi tendon will fatigue, and after you've been in a stretching position long enough, it'll relax, and you'll actually be able to get deeper into those poses. 
So I've been doing this one for a moment. What I want to do now is I'm going to lock this foot on the ground, right? I'm not going to let it slide. I'm going to put my hands to the other side on my other leg here, and I'm going to shift my weight forward, thereby opening my legs further. So you see I get a little shift there. And now I'm going to do the same thing again. And now I've gotten deeper in that stretch because that Golgi tendon has relaxed. Now, I might do that two or three times before I go to another position, but for the sake of time, I'm only gonna do it the one time this time. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to my back. I'm gonna turn the mat here. So let's see what I'm doing here. Now, for this one, I'm gonna lay on my back here. I'm gonna take my opposite hand and my opposite leg and I'm going to pull it to the ground. And I'm going to dig my toes into the ground here, trying to keep my knee as straight as possible. And I'm holding back here by my calf. I'm actually pulling on my leg. Now, I'm going to do that before I put my arm down. Then, I'm going to put my hand out and let it fall palm up. And as I start to stretch here, my arm is going to just get closer to the ground. And I'm going to rotate that shoulder socket. And I'll look at half of a snow angle here. As my leg gets looser and looser, I'm gonna walk my toes further and further up. From here, what I'm gonna do, now again, I would be doing each of these poses longer, but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna go through them quicker so that it doesn't take up as much time to watch. But I would do each of these poses as long as it feels good, as long as I have time for, or about a minute to two minutes per pose. The next stretch, I'm gonna work on the quadriceps here. So I'm gonna take the same leg that was just stretching over, I'm gonna grab that shin. Now, if you're not flexible enough to grab your shin, you can hook your pants here. If you have shoes on, you can hook those shoes. I know a lot of times people's legs are, and their flexibility is not that great. That's an easy way to get in there. If you really can't even get it there, you can grab yourself a belt and wrap a belt around your shin and that will help you get to this position. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull my leg back and point my knee as far behind me as I can. And I'll be getting a big stretch right here. But to make it stay in place, I'm just gonna pull it to that position and put my foot on the ground. The next thing I'm gonna do is rather than leaving this leg straight here, I'm going to bend this knee and it's going to put my hips in counter hip flexion and it's going to make that stretch even tighter. And so I'm just going to sit here and let that stretch go. Now, as it gets looser, I'll pull further back, just like so. Same as the other side. Now from here, I'm going to take to the next stretch. What I'm going to do is the same side arm here is going to go inside my leg and I'm gonna reach under and grab my shin. I'm gonna grab it with the opposite hand as well. I'm gonna lay back, keep this leg flat, not up here like this, keep it flat. I'm pulling my foot up like if I were trying to bring my foot to my face. I'm pulling there, that's gonna give us a big stretch right in here in the pure performance. Now, a lot of times when people are stretching, they ask me, Pete, am I supposed to feel this here? And the answer is always yes. Wherever you feel the stretch is where you're supposed to feel it. That's where your body's the tightest. Sometimes when you're stretching your hamstrings, your calves will feel the stretch. It's all connected, and if you're feeling it somewhere other than the targeted area, that's because you're tighter in that area. But that doesn't matter. You still do the stretch, you'll still get benefit. Now, I would go and repeat the same three stretches now on this side. Toes out, arm up. And what I like to do this way, even to make it better, is I'll take a small weight, maybe five pounds or less, and put it in my hand, get that more of a shoulder stretch here. So I'll go to the next one, to the quad stretch, pulling up here, and then that piriformis stretch right here. Okay, from here, I'm gonna turn over, and I'm gonna go to a scorpion stretch. So for this one, what I want to do is I'm going to lay belly down, I'm going to put one arm out, and I'm going to press off the other arm. Now I'm going to kick my leg up, over, and back, try and touch the ground. 
Now, you'll notice when I go, I'm not just reaching my leg back like this. I want to come up and over like I'm trying to make a big circle with my foot. Go to the other side after you hold for about a second. Hit the other side. Now, as I do this, I'll generally go high, medium, low for each rep. And say I'll do between 10 and 20 reps. If I go start here, that's high. One. And high on the other side. And I'm pushing off this side as well. Two. And then a medium one. Three. Four. And then a low one. Five. Six. And you'll notice as you move your arms to different places that you're gonna feel that stretch move on your body from the bicep, the shoulder, and the pec. It will hit in different places depending on the position and those are gonna be different for everybody. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to this position. After I've done 10 or 20 of those, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna go into a child's pose. Here, I wanna bring my head down. I wanna keep my arms locked. I'm trying to stretch my lats here. I'm gonna get as low as I can here. And just relax, stretch out those lats. After I've been here for a minute or two or whatever feels right, I'm gonna to start to walk my hands to one direction. Now when I do this, the outside hand or opposite of the direction I'm moving is gonna to start to walk out in front of that other hand. And that's gonna make that opposite lat stretch a lot more intense. So, and then I'll go to the other side and do the same thing. This is really probably the best lat stretch there is. Really just climb my hand out there. And then I go back here. Now from this one, I want to come back onto my toes, and I'm going to pedal out my calves here. Stretch those calf muscles a few times each side, and from there, I'm going to come down to the ground, try and put my chest on the ground, and rub my belly against the ground, and then up this way. From here, I have my toes dug in, and I'm going to stare up as high as I can, stretch the neck, and from here, I'm going to go back. We call that a yoga push-up. Now I'm going to pedal out those calves again, and down. I'll probably do between five and ten of these, depending on how I'm feeling. Pedaling the calves out each time. Good. Now, from here, I'm going to do a lunge that's going to stretch my hip flexor right here, and it's going to stretch my, uh, my hamstring on the opposite leg. So I'm going to show you this from both angles. What I want to do here, I definitely want to pad on the ground for my knees for this one. Now, I'm going to thrust my hips forward in this lunge, and you'll start to feel that stretch right away. Next, I'm going to stretch this arm behind me towards that corner. So I'm arching my back and stretching over. And I'll hold that for a moment. And then from there, I'm gonna stretch this leg now. I'm gonna drop down, roll onto my heel, straighten out my knee, and stretch that hamstring. Now, I would do that, that would be one rep. I'm gonna do that at least 10 per side. Now it's very common for people who have desk jobs to have very tight hip flexors, which feels like they have tight hamstrings, and they may have tight hamstrings too. Either way, the stretch is gonna hit both of those. And I'm gonna take my time on these. These are for me, they're not to be rushed through. Now, just to show you that from the side, so you can see the posture of my back and my hips. I'm gonna have a wide stance. I'm gonna thrust my hips forward here. I'm going to arch my back and reach towards the back corner here. And then from there, sit forward. 
forward, stretch the hamstring. sides. So, on the other side. And then, if I really want to work on opening my hips, like for me, I'm in karate and kickboxing and it's important to be able to lift my foot up and get a really high kick, I'll probably go back and do this hip opener again. And I might do that three times going through. Going back to just those first three stretches I talked about. Come in here, open the hips, rock them back and forth. Then to the butterfly and out here and extend it deeper into that stretch each time. Uh, also, for the martial artist, I would also do a split stretch on top of that. So adding your split stretch in and working there. So there you have it.